Sven is vacationing at his cabin in northern Minnesota and happens to get in line at a Dairy Queen. An Indian, Native American, man approaches him and makes a proposition. Indian man, hey I have a deal for you. I will ask you a riddle. If you can answer it I will buy you an ice cream, if you can't then you buy me one. Sven, sure I like riddles. Indian man, they are my father's child but not my brother. They are my mother's children but not my sister. Who are they? Sven, I have no idea. Who are they? Indian man, me. Good riddle, huh? Sven, yes a very good one. So he buys the man an ice cream. His vacation is over and he is back in southern Minnesota. He is also in line at a Dairy Queen. He spots his friend Ol nearby and decides to try to get a free ice cream. Sven, hey Ol. I have a deal for you. I will ask you a riddle. If you can answer it I will buy you an ice cream, if you can't then you buy me one. Ol, okay. I like riddles. Sven, okay then. They are my father's children but not my brother. They are my mother's children but not my sister. Who are they? Ol, I don't know. Who is it? Sven, some Indian guy up north. <laughs> A science teacher stood in the front of the class and said, Children, if you could have one raw material in the world, what would it be? Little Stevie raised his hand and said, I would want gold because gold is worth a lot of money and I could buy a Corvette. The teacher nodded, and then she called on little Susie. Little Susie said, I would want platinum because platinum is worth more than gold and I could buy a Porsche. The teacher smiled, and then she called on little Johnny. Little Johnny stood up and said, I would want silicone. The teacher said, Silicon? Why silicon, little Johnny? Because my mom has two bags of the stuff and you should. See all the sports cars outside our house. <laughs> An older woman, well past childbearing years went to a walk-in clinic where she was seen by a young, new doctor. After about three minutes in the exam room, the doctor told her she was pregnant. She burst out the door, screaming as she ran down the hall. An older doctor stopped her and asked her what the problem was, and she told him what had happened. After hearing her out, he sat her down in another exam room marched back to where the first doctor was and demanded, What is the matter with you? That lady is over 60 years old and has four grown children and several grandchildren. And you told her she was pregnant? The young doctor continued to write on his clipboard, and without looking up, he asked, Does she still have the hiccups? <laughs> the Dutch queen is in an elevator with three diplomats from France, Italy, and Spain. Suddenly, she farts loudly. At first, everyone is confused, but the French representative quickly comes to his senses, comes to her rescue, and says, Oh, I'm so sorry, that was me. They don't even travel one more floor before the queen farts again. This time, it's even louder than before. This time, the Italian representative tries to save her from the embracement and says, So sorry, this time it was me. A few seconds pass and suddenly the Spanish representative says, In the name of the great nation of Spain, I take full responsibility for the third, fourth, and fifth farts in advance. So my rich brother-in-law bought a jag. And one day while he was at a stoplight my destitute nephew, Ronnie, pulled up beside him in his 2003 Toyota. They are happy to see each other, the difference in wealth has never been an issue between them. How are you nephew? said Mel. Have you seen my new jag? My that's a fancy car, so let me ask you, what kind of stereo do you have in it? asked Ronnie. Why I have a Blaupunk 3500, the best you can buy. Oh, says Ronnie. You know, that's actually last year's model. This year they came out with the 5500, which is what I have. Huh, says Mel. Well, check out my all Corinthian leather seats. Well, says Ronnie. Corinthian leather was good a few years ago, but I just had Vulcan leather put in mine, check him. Huh, says Mel. Well, check out my new Bridgestone 6000 tires, cool eh? Gee, says Ronnie. You should talk to your mechanic, they recalled them, and replaced them with the 8800s like mine. 
And then Ronnie adds, So let me ask you, Mel, do you have a bed in the back of your car? Why? Says Mel, No, I don't have a bed in the back of my car. Well, says Ronnie, Check it out king-size bed in the back seat of my 2003 Toyota. Mel gets out of his car, goes up to Ronnie's, and leans in and sure enough there is a massive-sized bed in the back of Ronnie's car. He looks at the outside of the car, and it's small, look inside and there is a king-size bed. Huh, thinks Mel. Just then the light turns green and Ronnie says, Okay, see ya, and drives off. And this drives Mel just about crazy. He starts telling all his friends and family about the king-size bed in the back of Ronnie's car and they all think he has gone mad. So Mel starts calling auto shops and asking if they could put a king-size bed into the back of his Jag, and they all just laugh at him and hang up on him. But Mel soldiers on, he starts calling auto shops further and further away until finally he calls Uncle Bob's Garage and Fine Detailing. Shop in Watsonville, California. Hello, says the guy answering the phone. Uncle Bob's Garage and Fine Detailing. Dave speaking, what I can do for you. Hi, says Mel. This is going to sound odd, but can you put a bed into the back of my Jag? You bet, says Dave. Bring it in on Tuesday and we'll get that in there for you. Finally! Mel is delighted and he immediately drives from Toronto, Ontario to Watsonville, California. About 40 hours of driving I might add, gets the work done, pays the guy, and drives home as happy as a clam. Months go by. And finally, Mel gets his chance. He is driving along and he sees Ronnie's 2003 Toyota parked by the side of the road. Mel stops his car jumps out and goes over to Ronnie's, but the windows are a little steamed up, there is a gentle rocking motion of the car, and Mel is a little concerned about whether should he disturb him or not. So Mel waits a couple of minutes until he can't stand it anymore and taps the window. Nothing happens. He taps it again only a little louder. A few seconds go by and then Ronnie rolls down the window, a little bit of steam escapes from the car, and there is Ronnie wearing nothing but a bath towel. Hey Ronnie, says Mel, guess what? I got a bed in the back of my car. Just like you, come on check it out. Oh, says Ronnie, you got me out of my shower just to tell me that. <laughs> a man who is riddled with guilt confesses in an SMS message to his next door neighbor. Dear neighbor, I'm sorry. I've been riddled with guilt, and I have to confess. I have been helping myself to your wife for some time now. It's been so good I have not been able to stop myself. Sometimes it's just a quickie, but at other times it can last an hour or two or even till midnight. I know it's no excuse but I just don't get it as good at home. I can't live with the guilt any longer. I hope you'll accept my sincerest apology. It won't happen ever again. Feeling outraged and betrayed, the neighbor smashes his phone on the wall, glares at his wife, and starts smashing everything they own, the TV, the china, the glasses, he is on a rampage. A few minutes later the man sent another SMS message. Ducking autocorrect. I meant to say Wi-Fi. <laughs>